Welcome back to phase two of reintegration into van life. Um, we're in Bubwith Parish. We've got this fantastic park up last night. It were absolutely beautiful. Little picnic benches, little bins, locals really welcoming. And we're heading at the moment towards something that I really, really feel that I need. I need something healing. And I feel like this is really going to kind of help me to heal and feel better and give me lots of fresh air. Desert while the spring's still here They don't make haste cause they know what's coming We're in Hornsey which is uh, sort of east coast way This is not actually what Emma was talking about where we're going to end up where she wants to go But we've never been here have we? No and it were recommended um, to us because it's flat So a lot of the kind of uh, seasidey places are not very flat so this is quite good because everything is completely and utterly on one level. So much easier, but I'm feeling like I'm getting a bit more movement actually. It feels, uh, I sort of pay for it later on, but <laughs> but it's feeling a bit better. Like I've got a bit more movement. My hips are starting to move normally again. <laughs> Hornsey is only tiny but it's really nice, um, nice local uh, guy stood chatting to me while I knew we were having a look in that second hand shop, so that was interesting, telling us a little bit about the place and stuff. Um, so we're just about to go to a beach cafe, because um, obviously Hornsey is by the sea, so this is just like the town bit I think, so we're going to go check that out, so yeah, we can get a quick bite to eat. But it's a lovely town, definitely recommend coming to Hornsey, it's very quiet, it's nice. I wouldn't mind doing a bit more research into it though, because this guy was saying that um, apparently parts of Hornsey no longer exist anymore. Apparently it's, it like went into the sea basically. It's lost whole villages. Currently looking for a DVD called The Gift. So I play these little games, because Emma loves charity shops, so I need to keep myself amused. So I, I like, I find a movie or something and then, and then I have to try and find it on a DVD. So just a little silly game that I like to play to keep myself occupied. <laughs> You're going to the shop, buy an onion. Go buy an onion. You can't have onion. Beautiful little uh, park. Got the old bandstand and everything. I love that. Old bandstands and used to play all uh, brass instruments and stuff, didn't they? Oh, that is what I needed to see. See the sea. There oh. it is. In the distance, can't even see it on camera. Oh. Something about the sea in it, it's just... It's healing and it it's empowering healing. and it just it fills you full of energy, doesn't it? It's, the world has a natural way of being able to fill your body with what it needs. And being out in nature is the best way, I think, being around trees and grass and on the earth and everything. But at the moment, that's such an unsteady ground for me. So I thought, what's the next best thing? The sea. The sea. <laughs> it's like when you're a kid, isn't it? And you see all the seagulls going round. And it reminds you of, um, like, you know, playing ball games and stuff like that out in... Um, on grass and you know building sand castles on beach having sandwiches where half of it were filled with sand rather than actually what's meant to be in sandwich <laughs> having all sand rubbed off your toes when you were little and it used to kill oh all that open space it just makes you feel free doesn't it just looking out to see and seeing all that open space it feels like there's infinite opportunities don't there when you look out to see like that and you can just see for miles and miles and miles and there's just nothing but sea and sky. It's almost like it meets at some point, isn't it? And you can, you just, it's, there's worlds beyond there that you don't know where, what there is and it's oh, I do, just... it's Norway. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what's at the other end of it. No, you don't, because you've never been to no, Norway. No, but I know, I know, I know, that there's, I know that if I carry on across the North Sea, I'm going to get to Norway. I mean, like, there's always places to discover, isn't there? Like, oh, yeah. You get there and there's going to be little places that you can discover and people you can meet. I'm actually wrong. There's about, there's about a thousand people screaming at me now going, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, because I think it's Holland, isn't it? 
Because we're up near kind of Hull, is, are we? Oh, do you know, it I could think, be anywhere. So I think I think if you were to go there, it's not Norway. It could it's, literally it's be anywhere. It's the Netherlands. It's anyway, like when, when there's somewhere on the other side of it, isn't there? It's like when we were in Spain that time, and then, uh, no, we were in Ibiza that time. You looked out and you said, oh, you see, I said, what's that there? <laughs> and you said, oh, it's Spain. And it was like a tiny little thing sticking up out at sea she and sat, you convinced me it was she Spain. Sat on the beach. She's like, what's that rock out there? I said, oh, that's Spain, that's mainland. <laughs> she says, oh, is it? I don't understand geography. I never understood it at school, neither. There's a restaurant for sale there. It's oh, Swiss no, Swiss cottage thanks. restaurant and lounge bar. It looks nice, but can you imagine having to be tied to work in there every day in, day out? No, no thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I said that same time. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> We're talking, aren't we, down about how, um, you know, you meet somebody that's just like you. Like, you, you get a lot in relationships, don't you? You see it a lot with van life and stuff where people will put stuff on Facebook and saying, you know, how do I convince my partner to do this? And you can't. It's got... You've got to have the same outlook on life, haven't you? And I think we were just saying, like, we're quite lucky that we're both as mad as each other and we're both as, as nutty. We come up with most weird and wonderful ideas of things to do. You know, and we've just been lucky that we found each other and we have the same outlook in life, but not everybody has that. We're very similar, aren't we, in ways? Very similar. <laughs> very different in I some ways, but I'm very the similar. female version of you. Yeah. <laughs> it's called the Hornsey Hub. We're looking for this cafe on the beach. It's fish and chips over there. What's that over there? I think that's it, Em. No, it's this way. There's a little fish and chip cafe there. Need to have a stop off now because I can't. You're getting um, a bit tired now. Yeah. You've walked for a good five minutes there, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, it's far enough is that for me to, at the moment. <laughs> it's the, having this pram though, without this, makes a world of difference. Like having a walker. Emma was just saying it's like a proper old-fashioned seaside town. It's, it's. I love that. Me, I don't like. Um, I don't like new stuff, as you know, and neither does Emma, but... No, Daisy. <laughs> Daisy's off again, barking. Um, but this is, like, really traditional, like, proper British seaside town, you know what I mean? Fish and chips on beach. And there it is, look, there's the sea. Town. <laughs> look. Windmills. Yeah, do you know when you were a kid? Oh, oh yeah. you used look to that love one, girl. it. Little beach windows. Oh, it really takes you back to being a kid, doesn't it? Buckets and spades and... Oh, I didn't even have buckets and spades half the time when I went to the seaside. <laughs> right, what did you have? Just used to use your hands, didn't you? Sometimes you had a bucket and spade, but not all yeah. the time. Oh, I hope this cafe's not shutting now. I need to sit down. Keep in and just ask if they're still doing breakfast, sweetheart, for me. So it's shut all that way, bless her, she's walked. Like one, it wasn't far, less that it's far enough for me though at the minute and I've got to see and see it tight in. I can't even go on sand. And it's shut. <laughs> and it looks not like Andalusia Sea. <laughs> it's, only, it's like two o'clock on a Monday and the cafes are all shut in. Monday is like the new Sunday, isn't it? I'm going to have to push myself to go back round that way now, aren't I? You are right. I'm not smiling much anymore. No, it wasn't your beach. It wasn't your beach. <laughs> Dream world that you have in your head. To sit on a beach cafe and look out to a blue sea and I think... Uh, we might have to move on, we might have to move sort of further through the course. Next we've got Bridlington, Holt. Made a bit of a mistake here, haven't we, that we're a bit far. It's not... It's... <laughs> I just feel like I just want to sit down on that grass and just not move for the next fortnight. It's because you don't think about going back somewhere, do you? You just think about getting to somewhere. So you think, oh, you look up map and you think, oh, that's not far, that's all right. It's just a straight road down there. It's all flat, it's fine. And then you don't realise you've actually got to get back. But I was thinking, walking back, it'd be fine because I'll have had a sit down, had a coffee, had something to eat, and I'll be feeling a lot better to be able to then sort of go back. But, yeah, it's... Um, it's just odd, isn't Grit it? Grit your teeth and bear it, innit, now? Like, I went in, I said to the lady, oh, you know, can we still sit down? We're like... And there's people still sat there people eating. People still sat there eating. Even are just to say you can have a cup of tea, it'd have been nice. Are these people millionaires? Do they not need that extra customer at the end of the day? I don't get it, but anyway, it's, it is what it is. Since COVID, innit? Since COVID, 
Like everything just, nobody wants to stay up. And I think, way, do you know what though? I think in a way, it's, it's annoying for people that want to go in places. I really do get it because in COVID, I think people realise there's more to life than going yeah. to work. Yeah. And you they sort started of stopped to, that 12 hour day, didn't you? Yeah, and people sort of started thinking there's more to life than money, there's more to life than being open and making money. And, yeah. You know, and so they want their well, freedom, taught, don't it they? It taught and... people just to get by, didn't it? Yeah, like, rather I think than some, it did. So people stopped kind of chasing that rat race a little bit, I think. Um, which, if there were anything positive at all about COVID, I suppose it's that, is that people realised they didn't, you know, they could, they, could, they could do life in a different way, essentially, yeah. I think is what came out of it. And so now you find cafes shutting at one o'clock, two o'clock, you know, sort of having a longer weekend, which you can understand that, you know. We got back to the van, we've had a bit of dinner, um, we've had some really nice dinner actually. We have avocados, um, what else do we have? We have avocados, tomatoes, onions, um, on like a toast, didn't we? Really nice, I really enjoy that. So we've had that for lunch and then we had some really cheeky um, sort of caramel cake. <laughs> We're going on about how healthy it was. It was much better than going in cafe and having a breakfast. We've got some healthy dinner and then we followed it by cake. I'm feeling a bit more rested now. I'm still in a bit of pain, but I'm feeling a lot more rested than I was. Um, I think I overdid it a bit. I tried to push myself a little bit too far, having to walk straight back, which is not my fault. If the cafe had been open, wouldn't have had to walk straight back, would I? So we're going to move on now, not quite sure where, as always, but we're kind of hugging this east coast now. We've not really done um, the east coast that much, have we? Not this bit anyway, we've really sort of done this bottom bit sort of under Scarborough before. No, so. we've done a lot of Whitby, haven't we? And, uh, yeah, it'd be nice right to in. just sort of see what's around here, really. It seems to be a calmer pace of life around here. It seems a lot quieter. One of the things we've just been chatting about as well is that we get quite a few comments that crop up and questions, people, you know, messaging us and what have you, asking us about sort of how much van life costs, why we chose the van we chose, what's the best build to do, all those sort of things. And it is, <laughs> we always laugh really, because it's, it's totally understandable questions. And we used to ask the exact same questions all the time to people. And I think it's that time of year where people are looking at buying vans now. But it's like, how long is a piece of string, isn't it? <laughs> I think what we're going to do is I think we're going to look, we've just been chatting about what the best way to kind of answer these questions is. But in sort of for everybody, really, there's no point in just answering everybody individually. We can try and give you the best advice that we can and try and outline, I suppose, pros and cons to different things. So we thought what we'd do is maybe do a few different vlogs during the week um, as like extra ones. And we'll let you know on the social media sites when we're doing them as well. So keep your eyes open for them. Just sort of answering those questions about, you know, what's the best van to buy? Um, what's the best build to do inside? Um, how much does it cost, that type of thing. Um, you know, we'll just do as best to sort of, you know, outline stuff for you really. Uh, but it, but it is like, it's like living in a house. It's like kind of saying, how much does a house cost to run? You know, if you live in a five bedroomed house compared to a one bedroom flat, it's going to cost a lot different to run it, isn't it? You know, so it all does depend on what vehicle you've got and stuff. You're just going to wash up now, aren't you? And dry up and put I'm going to wash up and then we're <laughs> going to hit, hit the road. Apologies as well. If you follow us on any other social media, um, or, or like on the YouTube community tab, you'll notice that we haven't been posting. And the honest answer to that is obviously while Emma's been recovering, a few things have kind of just been put to one side while we're focusing on that really. So, um, but we will be back to obviously posting on social media and stuff and uh, YouTube community, back to the little games we started playing of uh, guessing where we're going next and stuff like that. So apologies if you are following us on, on YouTube community or social media, that's, that's the genuine reason why. It's because he's been looking after his wife, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's been it's taking care of me. Yeah, I've been taking care of you and lovely, Yeah, because I'm a right good husband. <laughs> That's why. He's going to get a gold star later. <laughs> I thought you were going to say goldfish then. Gold, get a goldfish. Let's have a goldfish Put your sticker van. on your chat. <laughs> going to get washed up now and then hit the road and uh, see where we end up next. Well, we went to bed last night in Cape and Bay. And we've woken up in Scarborough. <laughs> That's some mean feat for you, isn't it? What an absolute nightmare. An absolute nightmare we've had last night. Um, we parked up. We sat down to do all his work and what have you. Um, we had needed the internet. We had internet and we sat down. We still had three bars all the time. But would it work? No chance. Absolutely not. No idea why. It made no sense whatsoever. So we had to pack everything up. We'd all got bed set up. We'd got everything ready. Um, we had to pack everything up, get Daisy back in front, set off again to find another spot. 
So this time we parked right next to a telephone mast thing. <laughs> so we'd got full signal. I Googled, found a telephone mast and we went and parked up right next to it. So we thought we sorted, we can get his work done. So we'd been up trying to get all work done, got into bed and then what happened? And it started to rain inside the van, like properly coming through. Emma caught it on the phone because um, the camera gear I'd left on in the front. Okay, so I'm having to film this on my phone because our camera equipment is in the front of the van and I cannot get out to get to it because it is pouring it down. It's just started to calm down a little bit. But as you can see, it is leaking all the way through. So the leak is no better, guys, no better at all. We've currently got a towel on the bed because Daisy was <laughs> laid underneath it, soaking it all up before. Reese has had enough, he's shattered, he's been woken up. And if this carries on over the next few hours, we're going to have to get a pan out. So, Reese, you're going to have to um, lay here and hold a couple of pans or something. I don't know. I'm more concerned about the electrics um, and the water getting into that. But I can't reach the fuse thing because that's in the front of the van. Um, Reese doesn't understand electrics, so I can't send him to do it. So we're just going to have to hope and pray that it's at least it's cut if it's coming in. It's not running into the roof, is it? Because it's got an escape route. It's for like three o'clock in the morning, absolutely siling it down and all leaking, kind of coming through the vents and dripping onto the bed. To stay up for hours, check in on the weather. What percentage of rain is it going to be for next hour? Oh, it's 70 odd percent chance of rain for next hour. Then it's like 30 odd percent chance. Oh, it might calm down in an hour. And then suddenly it jumps up 85% chance of rain for until three o'clock in the morning. I was like, oh no. Poor Daisy got soaked because that's what woke us up. And um, we were asleep. And then Daisy just started running around bed, shaking. And I sort of woke up, looked at her, and she was wet through. She got dripped all over. So she was being asleep while it was dripping on her for a while. I'm going to go off and investigate anyway. We, we did actually find an even better park up than what we had before. So even though we've gone to bed in Cape and Bay and woken up in Scarborough, we've woken up in a much nicer park up. It's just a very wet one, which is a bit annoying, really. I'm going to get on and kind of seal it with that glue stuff, but we haven't had a day where we've either had the ladders or it's not been raining. So it's just kind of waiting for the opportunity. So yet again, we are going to have to move. It's absolutely siling it down. Which is a shame because where we are, the views above Scarborough are absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to try and go out and get some B-roll of that. But look at this. It's absolutely siling it down. We can't film in that, can we? I don't even know if you can see it. No, them. and the roof is going to be leaking yeah, again. The roof, and look at, the roof will be leaking, so we have this. to move. You can literally see it's from literally where, right over the blue dot that. where we are. Literally, again, a cat and mouse. We've been running from the rain now just constantly. It's like being in Tom and Jerry. Daisy looks absolutely disgruntled. Don't you, Daisy? Scarborough. It's that. It's good. I'll have to bleep that out. It's proper, it's proper like tacky British seaside town. But it's good. It's good. And it's childhood memories. I remember getting up at like five o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock in the morning, sometimes earlier. And my mum would have all stuff ready and stuff. Because we were going on holiday to Scarborough. And it's like, <laughs> we're like an hour and a half away. Do you know what I mean? We could have set off at half ten and still got there for, for lunchtime. But no, five o'clock, everybody up out of bed, whispering, whispering at five o'clock in the morning. There's only three of you in the house. <laughs> Going to Blackpool, they were the first one to shout Blackpool Tower, like it was some kind of monument standing. <laughs> and it's all its spectacular beauty. This is really awful because not only is it wet and cold, I'm in pain. You're going to get run over and all <laughs> And all I wanted to do was go into nature and just have a nice relaxing week. <laughs> <laughs> and instead I'm in Blackpool buying a stick of bloody rock. You're not even in Blackpool, you're in oh, Scarborough. It's, I'm not even in, not I don't Blackpool. even know where I am. Blackpool's I'm cold, good. I'm wet and it's horrible and I want to go home. Let's promote Scarborough. Scarborough oh. Council are going to love us, I'm telling you now. We're just going to have to do the best we can to film because it's absolutely siling it down. It's in prices. 
Has it gone up in Scarborough? I thought this used to be a cheap place to come. It's what 12 it? quid. What? 12 quid for like a normal bit of lunch. That can't be right, well, can I, it? Well, I don't know, because it was £10.50 for a prawn sandwich over there. Jeez. Right, cafe. You need a lot of money to come to Scarborough, don't you? I thought it used to be cheap. It's cheaper to go to Spain. Why are we not in Spain? Oh, Willie, look, famous fish and, fish and, fish and chips. chips, yeah. Famous fish they and chips. They are good, them. actually. Good fish and Willie. chips. So if you're not from England, we have two famous fish and chip kind of restaurants in England. We have the Magpie, which is in, in Whitby, and we have Winking Willie's. Um, there's loads of others. In fact, put a comment down on the best, the best fish and chip place that you know. And then if anybody kind of visits England from America or whatever, they'll know where to get the best fish and chips then. I just want donuts. Look at this. Emma, I want a bucket and spade. <laughs> Look at this. You'd be going on on your own. Look at this. Remember playing that when you were a kid? Show catch. Velcro lasted for about three minutes and then broke. Bucket and spade, fudge, You can get rock. some of that, it's reduced, look. Shells. Vanilla fudge. You the can wheels. have some of that if you want. That. I, might, I might treat myself to some fudge. <laughs> Aren't way back, not yet. I don't want to spend all my spending money. Do you want to be going on slotties? Remember that, slot machines. Two slot P machines. Slots. Two P slot machines. And you put two P's in to try and win two P's. Reece, look at this, Reese, look at this, look. Look. £16.95 for fish and chips. No way. £16.95. Oh, you get bread and butter with it, though. There's got to be a backstreet cafe that's cheaper than this, aren't there? Is it because we're on the front? I don't know. Get some donuts, look. I am going to get some donuts. I'm not coming out way to Scarborough and not having donuts. The vlogging standard of this is probably terrible because I'm like this for the camera because I don't want to film other people. Some people don't like being filmed, do they? So I'm kind of like this trying to avoid people. But it'll just give you an idea of how good it is here. But... <laughs> <laughs> the plan, if there is one, what an episode this has been. But the plan is to go and get warm somewhere with a nice cup of coffee, have a little bit of lunch. I've already walked like and at then, least three I don't minutes. Know what, what else? And that's too much. What are you doing in there, Daisy? She's nice and dry under there. So we're in the old town tea rooms. Old town tea rooms. It's literally just on the back street from the main town. Um, so it's you know it's not it's it's literally like a two second walk and it's absolutely gorgeous. Guys just been telling me they've got um, an old Yorkshire tea room somewhere as well. So it's like the second business they've opened up. They've only been open since twenty seventh of March. You can hear it noisy background if you can hear that. He's put um, a lovely heater on for us to to warm us up as well. His mum makes all homemade cakes and it's really reasonable, like really good prices. Just got, um, we just ordered a full veggie breakfast. I'm so impressed, I'm telling you all about it because I'm really impressed. Eight quid for a large vegetarian breakfast and they've got vegetarian black pudding. Never even heard of that. Got like veggie bacon and veggie sausages and normally you go for a breakfast, vegetarian, vegan, whatever, and you get like, just, they just take the meat off and give you what's left usually. But this looks really good. Oh, I right, enjoyed that breakfast. It's, um, I love finding them little kind of back street cafes rather than the front, because the front businesses will just make so much money. Yeah. So I'd rather support those little back streets. So it's, um, what's the name it's of the street? It's on Eastborough. So Eastborough. Come up um, opposite the public toilets that are on the front on the beach. Right opposite there's a road called Eastborough. And just follow it round the corner, round the back, and it's just up there. Highly recommended. Lovely, lovely people. Yeah, really nice. Enjoyed that. So I don't know what we're going to go next now. I'm check out rest of Scarborough. <laughs> <laughs> buying donuts. this man for two returns. The Scarborough tram lift established, I think it said in 1861. 
Um, it still looks as it 1881. would. 1881. But yeah, it still looks like it's very Victorian, isn't it? It's lovely. I can't believe in all the time I've been coming to Scarborough, I've never actually been on that. And it was really good, actually. I thought it was really scary because it's high up, but it wasn't at all. It was really nice. Oh, it's blowing me out of here. I were brave there. I'm scared of heights, aren't I? Little kids on it and stuff laughing, so I could hardly have a panic attack, <laughs> could I? <laughs> it's fun for kids in it, Scarborough. Kids always love Scarborough because you've got all slotting machines and what have you, but you can see looking at the historical buildings and stuff just how beautiful it would have been in Victorian times, you know. There we oh, go. Look at the size of them. That's a big donut. Yeah. I believe this lady here is Queen Victoria. There she is, look. You've got all these kind of very Victorian buildings, which is cool with all the seagulls kind of screaming overhead, overlooking the seaside town of Scarborough. It really is the architecture. If you just stop when you're in Scarborough and look up, the architecture is really, really interesting. It's really cool. It's kind of got a very historic feel to it, which obviously we love, as you know. Um, well, it is Queen Victoria. Look, it tells you all about it. Yeah, so Queen Victoria's statue in the town hall. They had to redo it um, because it had been weathered with the um, it had been weathered with the sea, so they got donations to redo it. Tesco's helped with the Tesco bags. It says. <laughs> nice of them, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Good old Tesco's. There is a beauty about Scarborough. Um, you know, we joked earlier, didn't we, about it kind of being tacky, but there is there is an old Victorian British spirit kind of still still um, still around, if you know what I mean. You can still feel it. You know, the old Punch and Judy shows, kind of the multicoloured little shacks, the old seaside multicoloured little kind of uh, beach shacks, your beach huts. Mm -hmm. 